I feel as though the financial world has lost the plot. And uh, I feel that uh, investors, ha especially after the tech, because of the tech and telecom bust, and then even more so after 08, 09, have become extremely risk averse. And so much so that they are investing in the past. Uh, so what we're seeing is investors and analysts worrying about whether they will beat their benchmarks. Now, benchmarks uh, are there because these companies have been very successful over time and they rise to the top of benchmarks. One of the reasons I started ARC is because we have never been on the threshold as, of as much disruptive innovation as we are today. And yet, this shift into benchmarks is more about, as I said, investing in the past. So ARC is all about the new creation. I, I, I feel that we have witnessed in the last 20 years the most massive misallocation of capital in history as, as uh, funds have really um, uh, evolved towards these benchmarks. And it is during a period of risk off that we we saw during 21 for innovation and 22, fear of interest rates rising in 21, and then the reality of interest rates rising in 22 absolutely destroyed uh, assets uh, of long duration. Uh, and, uh, and I don't mean just stocks. Long duration includes long-term bonds as well. So last year, we had uh, the uh, worst bond market uh, in, in really history, since the 1700s, uh, because the fat Fed jacked up interest rates 22-fold in roughly a year's time. This has never happened in history, uh, and I think it w has been very destructive um, in that it has pushed investors even closer to their benchmarks. So they are uh, buying Apple and the fangs and the magnificent seven and they are selling uh, the stocks of companies uh, that are innovating and creating the new world uh, now i say to my team and dan white uh, associate portfolio manager on my team i always say truth will win out and the forces that this 22-fold interest uh, in increase in interest rates have set up I think are, are going to move in the opposite direction and are going to reward long duration assets uh, like long bonds, but uh, also like innovation based strategies, pure play innovation. These five platforms, so these are five innovation platforms evolving at the same time. This has never happened in history. The closest we've gotten to this is the early 1900s, when three innovation platforms evolved at the same time. Back then, it was telephone, electricity, and the internal combustion engine. Completely transformed the world. Today, we're talking about these five. And the biggest catalyst um, uh, in terms of uh, all of these innovations is artificial intelligence. You can see it at... Uh, at the center here. So the five major platforms are robotics, energy storage, artificial intelligence, blockchain technology, and multi-omics sequencing. Um, we have, uh, in, the last, in the last 20 years, we were fighting in the financial markets. Now, I know a lot of you are venture, are in the venture world, you're, you're entrepreneurs, and you, you may not relate to this, but what we are fighting in the public equity markets is this notion, and have been fighting, that uh, grow, exponential growth, rapid growth, cannot be sustained. And, um, uh, and that is because uh, we've been in a linear growth world for so long, where you do have a burst of activity and then, the, and then it decays down to the GDP growth rate. Um, we, uh, in the tech and telecom bubble, we first heard the expression exponential growth. 
growth sustained, say 20 to 30 percent growth sustained uh, for years. And many people thought that was going to happen. Uh, and that's how we got the tech and telecom bubble. We had too much capital chasing too few opportunities too soon, and it ended badly. Now, the seeds for these five major innovation platforms were planted during the 20 years that ended in the tech and telecom bubble. And uh, they have been germinating ever since. Uh, they weren't ready, because the technologies were not ready during the tech and telecom bubble. We didn't get the cloud until 2006. We didn't get uh, deep learning uh, out of ImageNet until 2012. Uh, we didn't get the other big breakthrough in artificial intelligence uh, transformer architecture until 2017-18. We were not ready for prime time uh, back then. And even if the technologies were getting ready, they were far too expensive. So uh, the first whole human genome was sequenced, or shall I say most of it, we thought it was the whole human genome, in 2003. It took $2.7 billion dollars just to sequence one person's genome, $2.7 billion, and it took 13 years of computing power back then. Again, the technologies really weren't ready, and if they were even close to ready, they were far too expensive. Today, DNA sequencing, remember I just said it took $2.7 billion 20 years ago to sequence one person's genome. Today, it takes less than $500 and just a few hours of computing power. So again, that's a really good example of back then, too much capital, chasing too few opportunities too soon, right? Uh, investors were chasing the dream. Today, where are we? As I just mentioned, the tech and tele telecom um, bust, and then again, 08, 09, has scared investors to death. And so here are these technologies, these technologies, again, the seeds were planted back then, they are ready for prime time now, and investors are running away. They're running for the hills. What are the hills? They're benchmarks. Uh, and, uh, you know, it does take a lot of fortitude. Um, as George said, I'm, I'm probably at my best in front of CNBC, who, who you all hate. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, they, uh, they do not understand that ARC is the closest you'll find to a venture capital fund in the public mar uh, equity markets. And they tr truly do believe that rapid growth leads to inflation. And if you look at the history of the last 40 years, that has been absolutely untrue. You, you can, I mean, you can see the numbers. They're just not looking. Uh, they're, they're very Phillips curve, very Keynesian in, uh, in their uh, assumptions, and, and they're just wrong. Um, uh, 